Okay, so here we're gonna talk about factoring the difference of two perfect squares, which we abbreviate as DOTS. It stands for difference of two squares. Okay, DOTS, it's just a shortcut name. All right, so whenever you have two terms, there's one of two ways you could do it. Number one, if there's a greatest common factor, you can factor out a greatest common factor. So for example, if we had this right here, we could factor out a greatest common factor of 4x, which would leave us with, right, we took out the 4, we took out one of the x's, so we still have an x, and then bring down the minus sign, and then 8 divided by 4 is 2, and we had an x, but we took it out, so it would leave us with x minus 2. So the first way you could factor when you have two terms is by factoring out the greatest common factor, okay? Sometimes you could do that, sometimes you can't. The other thing you want to look for when you have two terms, let me just erase this so we're not confused because that's actually not what we're doing today. The other thing you want to look for is whether you have a difference, which means a subtraction sign, of two terms that are both perfect squares. So for example, this right here is a perfect square, right? The square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of x squared is x. 2x times 2x gives you 4x squared. And this number is a perfect square. Right? The square root of 25 is 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. So when you have a difference of two perfect squares, this down here is how we're going to do it. Okay, step one. We set up two sets of parentheses. The first one has a plus sign in it, and the second one has a subtraction sign in it. Okay, addition, subtraction. All right, step two. You're going to take the square root of the first term and place it before these operation symbols. So the square root of 4x squared would be 2x, right? The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x. So we put a 2x in the first spot in each parenthesis. And then step three, take the square root of the second term and place it after the operation sign in each set of parentheses. So our second term is 25. If we take the square root of that, we get 5. So we put a 5 here and a 5 here. So it leaves us with 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. And I just want to show you why this works. If you did a quick check, right, if we did, if we were to take this and double distribute this out, okay, we would get, let's see, so 2x times 2x is 4x squared. This is just my check. 2x times negative 5 would be negative 10x. 5 times 2x would be positive 10x. And 5 times negative 5 would be negative 25. Now, if we wanted to combine our like terms, look at these two middle terms. We have a negative and a positive of the same thing, so they cancel, leaving us with 4x squared minus 25. And isn't that the original expression? Okay, so that this would be factored form. Factors are just what multiplies to give us the original expression. So 2x plus 5 is our first factor, and 2x minus 5 is the other factor. Okay, so one thing that I want to point out is that it says it down here, right? It says note. Sometimes you can pull out a greatest common factor. And if you can do that, you want to do that before you start. Like if you look at these two terms, right? We have a 4x squared and we have a 36. You want to say, what could I pull out of both of these two terms? Well, I could pull out a 4, right? Don't, aren't they both divisible by 4? So you pull out a 4. And then that would leave me with in parentheses x squared minus... And since 36 divided by 4 is 9, you divide it with the 9. Now, if you look in the parentheses here, you can factor this further. This is a difference, and the first term is a perfect square, and the second term is a perfect square. So what we do is, after we bring down the 4, you would set up two sets of parentheses. One gets a plus, and one gets a minus. And you would take the square root of the first term and put it here and here. And you would take the square root of the second term and put it there and there, so this would be fully factored. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a few of these to do with you. Um, you know what, on this page, why don't we do the evens? Okay, so number eight. Now remember, the first thing we say to ourselves is can I factor out a greatest common factor? But there's nothing you could factor out of each of these two terms. So then you look and say, well, I have a difference and both of these are perfect squares, so I'm gonna factor this using dots, right? A difference of two squares. So I set up two sets of parentheses, I make one addition and one subtraction, and I take the square root of the first term, which is 8, and put it in the first spot in each parenthesis, 
and I take the square root of the second term and put it in the second spot in each parenthesis. And be very careful. I know some of you might have like been tempted to put the variable first, right, the x here, and the number second, but you want to keep it in the order of our original expression. If the first term is 64, you're putting the square root of that in the first spot. If the second term is x squared, you're putting the square root of that in the second spot. And the order does matter because although 8 plus x is the same thing as x plus 8, when you're subtracting, if you reverse this order, they're not equivalent. Okay? All right, so number 10. We want to look and say, can I factor out a greatest common factor? Well, other than 1, there's nothing that divides evenly into 49 and 4. And then here we have a's and here we have b's, so two totally different variables, so we cannot factor out a greatest common factor. But what we do have is a difference of perfect squares, right? Each of these is a perfect square. So let's set up two sets of parentheses. We'll make one addition and one subtraction. And then let's look at the first term. The square root of 49 is 7. And the square root of a to the fourth is a squared, right? a squared times a squared gives you a to the fourth. So the square root of this whole term is going to be 7a squared. So that's what we put in the first spot in each parenthesis. So we put the square root of the first term in the first spot. Now let's take the square root of the second term and put it in the second spot. So the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of b squared is b. So we're going to have 2b in the second spot in each parenthesis. Now, it's really important when you're done factoring using dots to look at the parentheses and say, well, can I factor further? Now, if you couldn't factor out a greatest common factor from the beginning, you're not gonna be able to do it now, okay? Um, but when you have two terms separated by a subtraction sign, you wanna say, is this a difference of perfect squares? Well, although this is a difference, 7a squared is not a perfect square, and 2b is also not a perfect square, so we can't factor this further. And this is a plus sign, so we're not going to be able to factor that further. So this would be our final answer. Okay, number 12. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are looking at this and saying, oh, look, we have a difference of perfect squares, right? Just like we had in, the, in 8 and 10, in the two examples we just did. But remember, what's the first rule of factoring? Can I factor out a greatest common factor? And here you can, right? Look at the 9 and the 36. You want to say, what's the biggest number that divides evenly into both of them? Well, 9 is. So I'm going to factor out a 9. Now, don't be tricked. Once you factor out the greatest common factor, do not try to set up two sets of parentheses, okay? This right here is no good. That's not what we're doing. When you factor out a greatest common factor, what we do is we set up one parenthesis and we one set of parentheses, and we put in that parenthesis what we're left with after we factor out the 9. Okay, so I erase that and I put one pair of parentheses. Okay, right here, an open parenthesis, close parenthesis. I don't want another one. Okay, so when I factor out a 9, I'm left with, well, I had the 9, I pulled it out, so I'm going to bring down the m squared. And then I have a subtraction sign I'm going to bring down. And 36 divided by 9 is 4. Now, what you notice is if this started off as a difference of perfect squares, once you factor out the greatest common factor, you're still going to have a difference of two perfect squares. So we could factor this further. So in order to factor this further, don't forget to bring down the 9. The 9 is one of the factors, right? So we need to keep bringing that down. Now, since this is a difference of perfect squares, underneath this, now I open up my two sets of parentheses. One gets addition, one gets subtraction. I take the square root of the first term and put it in the first spot the square root of the second term and put it in the second spot. And then I want to look and say, can I factor further? Well, this is an addition sign, so I can't do dots. This is a subtraction sign, but neither one of these is a perfect square, so I can't factor further. So this would be my final answer. Okay, one thing I want to point out, if you had looked at this original expression, right, and said, oh, I'm just doing it over here. You don't have to write this because I don't even want you to do it this way. Um, but if you had looked at it and said, oh, look, this is a difference of perfect squares, and you set up two sets of parentheses, made one plus and one minus, and you put the square root of the first term in the first spot and the square root of the second term in the second spot, okay? This is not correct. This is not fully factored. Um, and the reason why is because look at it in here. Can't you still factor a 3 out of these two terms? 
And same thing in this parenthesis. Can't you still factor a three out of these two terms? So if you did start it this way, you could still finish it correctly. You could say, all right, well, let me, do, let me factor out a three out of these first two terms. So if I pull out a three, it's going to leave me with m, bring down the plus sign, and then six divided by three is two. And then if I factor a three out of this parenthesis, okay, I'm going to bring down the m and bring down the minus sign. And again, six divided by three is two. And then all I really have to do is just see these two numbers just grouped them together. What's three times three? Three times three is nine. And then I can bring down that m plus two. Oop. And I can bring down that m minus two. And what you'll notice is, look at this. This right here is the same as what we got. It's more steps. And I find that if you forget to factor out the greatest common factor in the beginning, most people don't even realize and, and they totally forget to factor it out at the end. So the chances of getting the right answer is, you know, not as good if you don't factor out the GCF from the very beginning. Okay, so I just recommend always do it in the beginning, less steps, and that way you don't forget. Okay, so if you flip to the next page, we're going to do the first two even examples on that page as well. So I guess 14 and 16. Okay, so number 14. Now, when you look at these two terms, right, there's no greatest common factor to factor out, but... We do have a difference, and nine is a perfect square, and we know y to the fourth is a perfect square, but what about x to the sixth? Is that a perfect square? Well, let's think about it. Does something times itself give you x to the sixth? Well, x to the third times x to the third does give you x to the sixth. And the reason why is when you're multiplying two terms with the same base, you actually add these exponents. Think about it. It kind of makes sense because x to the third means we have three x's. And again, x to the third means we have three x's. So if we want to put a multiplication symbol in between them, doesn't that mean we have six of them all together? So as long as you have an even exponent, it is a perfect square because all you have to do is take that exponent and cut it in half. Okay, so the square root of x to the sixth is x to the third. Okay, so we're going to set up two sets of parentheses. One of them will have an addition sign, and the other will have a subtraction sign. And it doesn't matter which you put first. You could put the subtraction sign here and the addition sign here. I always do it in this order, but it doesn't have to be. You could put it in the other order if you want. Okay, so again, the square root of x to the sixth is x to the third, and the square root of y to the fourth is y squared. So I'm going to put an x to the third, y to the y squared in the first spot in each parenthesis. And then since the square root of the second term, since the square root of 9 is 3, I'm going to put a 3 in the second spot in each parenthesis. Okay, and then we want to look and say, can we factor further? Well, if we have two terms, right, since we know there's no GCF, we're looking at our term that has a minus sign in it and saying, is this a difference of perfect squares? Well, this is not because, look, there's an odd exponent. An odd exponent means... It's not a perfect square. And then 3 over here is not a perfect square either. So this would be our answer. Okay, and then finally, number 16. Now, I mean, this is a fraction, and this is a whole number. I'm going to say there's probably not a greatest common factor that we could pull out of here. So we have a difference, right? And 625 is a perfect square. If you're not familiar, um, plug it in your calculator. Plug in the square root of 625, and it will give you 25 because 25 times 25 gives you 625. And m to the 12th, remember, as long as it's an even exponent, it's a perfect square. And I'll talk about this fraction in a minute. So as of right now, I'm gonna set up two sets of parentheses. I'll make one of them addition and the other subtraction. And since the square root of 625 is 25, and remember to take the square root of a term with an exponent, right? Don't we just cut that exponent in half? So half of 12 is 6. So the square root of m to the 12th would be m to the 6th. And the reason being is because m to the 6th times m to the 6th gives us m to the 12th, right? When you're multiplying two terms at the same base, we add those exponents. Okay, now a fraction is a perfect square as long as the numerator is a perfect square and the denominator is a perfect square, which they both are, right? The square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 81 is 9. So the square root of this fraction would be 4 ninths. So I'm going to put that in the second spot in each parenthesis. 
Okay, so now we want to look and say, well, can we factor further? Okay, this has a plus sign, so no. This has a minus sign, so is this a difference of perfect squares? Well, 25 is a perfect square. M to the 6, right, that's an even exponent, so that's a perfect square. And this fraction, again, is a perfect square because 4 is a perfect square and so is 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the second parenthesis further. So I get a plus and a minus. And the square root of 25m to the 6 would be 5m to the 3rd. So I'm going to put that in the first spot in each parenthesis. And then the square root of 4 over 9 would be the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3, so it would be 2 thirds. Now, the one thing I don't want to forget to do is I don't want to forget to bring down this first parenthesis, right? Because wasn't this one of my factors? This was one of my initial factors. So I bring this down, and all said and done, I wind up with three factors. All right, so this is my answer.